All right, hello everybody. Good to see you. Hope my microphone sounds okay. Check my amount. Testing, testing. All right. We are about to mic David up. David is getting ready to sew. Make sure my exposure looks good. All right. Let me check your exposure. David will be sewing a black jacket today, if you can believe it. We can't see your face in the stream, David. How about you dip down a little bit and to your left? Hey, <laughs> okay, don't do that. Please, okay, don't do that. All right, I'm gonna get David mic'd up here. All right, we'll try to give David some sound here. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Jeremiah. Uh, I'm too loud. See that? I'm pretty loud to begin with. Uh, David is going to be sewing a jacket today, and we will be fielding your questions. I'm a little hot. I will turn that down a little bit. It is a bit warm in here. What are you going to do? I think he meant the microphone, but... Uh, my noise, my, my limiter. Right. Trying to, uh, you have to have the noise gate on a little bit to keep the, uh, to keep the sounds from the, uh, production area from going in too far. All right, uh, say hello, David, please. Hello. All right, David's mic'd up. It looks like it's working. And a little more. I have a semi, doesn't have a very long cable, but I have a semi-mobile microphone here, uh, camera here, that I'll be using to move around a little bit. Hello, everybody. Here's why going. <laughs> oh no, we've, we've lost connection to our small cam. I, I cursed it by moving it around. Let me unplug it and plug it back in. That usually seems to fix things. All right, we're back up. Okay, just to give you guys a little, a little uh, idea of the setup here. Make my window a little smaller. So we've got our microphone and our little streaming station here. Uh, we've got David over there sewing. You can see. Uh, and you are doing the liner, is that correct? I am going to start with the liner. Everybody wanted to see the lining, so it's going to happen. All right, David is going to do a liner. Although these these kind of count. Yeah. The gain down on David's mic a little bit. And so we're probably going to pick up a little bit of sound. I'm, I'm quiet and... Uh... And, and Jeremiah's loud. What what are the chances of that? Uh, we'll pick up a little bit of sound from your uh, machine. From your machine, but I think that'll actually be good. Uh, yeah. So to just to, get, to give you guys an up an idea, of what's going to go go down today? Um, I'm going to be popping in and out. Um, so what are the? We already have a question, David. What are those? So these little small parts are just going to be part of the panel of the uh, liner. Yeah. So this is the sort of the bottom facing, so it'll go sort of around the bottom hem of the back of the jacket on the lining side. And the other little pieces that we're doing are the same thing, but for the sleeves. Okay. Buddy, I'm working on my noise gate here. Yeah, so the little parts are going to be used in the sleeves. And I think we've got a pretty good shot. Should be able to see. Yeah, this is the collar. So there's two pieces that are sort of opposing curves that makes it sort of fit to the back of your neck nicely. Sounds to see in my trying to uh, eat my mic enough that it doesn't clip me, but it also doesn't pick up whenever you're speaking. Mm. Say something else, David, please. What's that? 
Say something else? Uh, yeah, I can definitely say something else. What would you like me to say? Oh, I think that's good. Thank you. Got it. All right, so I think we're pretty good on sound. Uh, so yeah, so David will be sewing. And I will be uh, here in and out. I think Leslie might pop in too. Uh, Willow may make an appearance as well. It's not like she's ever busy or anything. Um, that was a joke. Uh, then we can, my little camera may freeze. I'm trying to adjust it. And uh, yeah, and then so David will be sewing and kind of talking. And uh, I will be in and out. Um, other people will probably be in and out to, to moderate and sort of field questions. So please, if you guys have questions, uh, feel free to drop them into the chat. I'm also monitoring Discord as well. So if you're on uh, our Discord server, please feel free to. Uh, ooh, where is it? Let's turn that. Wait, is that my camera? Ooh, that's not good. It's terrible. I don't want to mess with the exposure on my little camera, but it's fine. If I'm not well exposed, it's not like I mess with cameras often. Yeah, this is it's all new to you, huh? Honestly, this kind of like on the fly video stuff. Uh no, good question. So Joshua Joshua Yanchar? Um this is not the coat we saw in the ketchup test. This is actually, uh oh, David's camera's frozen. Uh oh. Uh, this is actually the uh, Ronin, which is a pretty well, yeah. Uh, it's, so it's not. This is not the. This is not the white. This is the black fabric. So if you guys are familiar with the Jonin and that kind of black um, tech-like waterproof fabric. Uh, David said, what would happen if we take it and turn it into a Ronin? So he's going to be sewing a Ronin, which is a pretty well-known uh, sort of moto-style jacket, if y'all are familiar with it. And uh, he's going to be doing it in all uh, waterproof fabric. Why, David? Just because you can, I guess? Uh, well, the Ronin is somewhat relevant because we are we're going to be shipping those soon. We have three orders open. Um, they are, you know, they're up for pre-order now, so we wanted to, I don't know, it was a good opportunity to make make one, give, some, give us something to do this week, as if we didn't have enough. Um, but then on top of that, uh, I owe my brother a birthday present. So this is this is pulling double duty. Um, it's been a little while, it's a little late, so I'm kind of over, overcompensating a little bit. So I'm going to make it a waterproof one, and he likes to run in, so it all sort of came together. All right, so a little bit of familial obligation, a little bit of uh, circumstance. And we have three different, uh, so the Ronin is usually made up of three different fabrics. Uh, specifically, like, there's supposed to be three different weight of materials. So the main body is uh, sort of heavyweight, and then the shoulders are heavier, and then the sleeves are lighter weight. So it has some mobility, but it's kind of, armor uh, adjacent and conveniently I have three different kinds of or three different weights of this waterproof material that we've got like sample yardage of so it was a good opportunity to sort of see how those three things play together where with the Jonin it's just one of those three materials Camera, the camera keeps freezing weirdly. I don't know why. Hmm. Hmm. This is the same camera that I use for every stream, and it works perfectly fine. Maybe it's because I also have the other camera. I might turn my camera off. See if that works. All right, David's camera is down. We will. I'm gonna turn my camera off now that it's not super necessary. I don't know why it works hmm. perfectly fine. Whenever we use it for the stream, I think maybe, like I said, having the other camera uh, doesn't do it any favors. Any favors. Unplug and replug. Yeah. I'll
by the time you get this one up and running, this lining will be basically done. <laughs> Take your time, Dave. Take your time. <laughs> I mean, this is the same setup we use every week for the stream. There we go. Uh, I'm going to turn, I'm going to deactivate my camera. All right, so I will turn it on later. You guys, bye. You'll still hear me in the background, but I'm going to turn this off. See if that helps a little bit. All right, I'm actually going to go back to the office for a little bit. David will be continuing to sew. Uh, please ask your questions. I will be back to answer them and ask David, and, and we'll talk about them in just a little while. I'll also come back in a minute to make sure that the camera is still working. We have to make some adjustments to that. But, uh, yeah, please uh, please keep asking your questions. And um, you, do you would you actually maybe like to have, like, a phone or something that has YouTube open on it or, like, a way that you can So that I can kind of look at cameras yeah, or, or look at comments? If you don't, if you don't, that's okay. Yeah, I can, I can do that. Probably. No worries if, if it's too much trouble. All right. I will be back soon, or somebody hey, look, will be. YouTube recommended this live stream right away. I'm going to have to turn it on silent, though, huh? Oh, talking about asking questions about Mass Effect. Yeah. Yeah. So we just announced we we uh, just signed that contract um, yesterday uh, with Bioware, and we're very much looking forward to working with them. They've been really cool. To, even just the negotiations have been really chill, and uh, it's we're ba basically directly working with the creative team, so that's really good for us. Um, it it'll be fun because it's especially Mass Effect is it's futuristic in a similar way to our Augment collection, but in a way that's a little bit more space or sort of well, obviously they're in space as opposed to cyberpunk on land. Um, so that'll be fun to sort of try and make a distinction for for me uh, what those design languages mean. Uh, and Dragon Age is a little bit more, it's a little more high fantasy, even than, than the Lord of the Rings, which we did. Looking for tools. does it look right here I'm just doing the inside pocket um, which normally we print placement points for but I usually just wing it because I've done it enough times that I know the angle and the position that it should be First few hundred times I had to do an inside pocket, I was terrified having to cut 
the piece after I'd already started sewing it. But it's simply the only way. Yeah, you simply can't leave. I don't think you can leave, Jeremiah. That's how you get it really set up. The other camera wasn't good either. I don't, well, I don't know. Okay. I don't know what it is. Literally, this camera is just more versatile than the other one. Yeah. It's pretty hard for me to look at comments at, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's fair. All right. All right, everybody. I am going to move the camera to David. Sorry about the freezing. Uh, I'm going to move the, the other camera to David and try to get it to work. Not entirely sure what's going on. Literally the same setup we use all the time. Oh, cam link keeps crashing. Is my uh, mic still running? Uh, yeah, your mic's still on. Well. There's a question of how many of this specific coat have I made. I think I could probably safely say at most five. Um, if it was an older design, I would have that that number would be very different. Um, but these days, I generally only make the first few. Uh, although at the same time, most of our coats, to me are very, not similar, but they're like, the process of making them is the same, even if the construction is different, if that makes sense. All right, all right. Camera on the way. Anyway. I mean, this little guy is working, so um, close as I can to you. Is the cable short, though? It is very short, and I don't have a USB 3.0 extension. Damn. I will move it. It's not... Not comical at all. I don't know why. We can been sticked up every time. All of a sudden, it's just like, you know what? I 
going to get a real oh. close shot. Ooh. Just like... This is going to be a terrible yeah. angle. Hang on a second. I have to move the Can I do this? I love it. All right. Does that work? That's, no. You can't see anything. Yeah, but that's some of that. Nope. that terrible. We're oh, going to put it's that frozen up. anyway. Huh? No, it's, it's a good map, but I'm going to put it on this uh, tripod. Okay. And then just use that yeah. as the main camera. Just a lesson in humility. Lesson in huh? Yeah, I, don't I think maybe it's because we have multiple things, like we're trying to do multiple um, like cameras at once. Mm. And the live stream is usually. Can we just kill the stream and start it over? That's no, fine. Once I get this, this camera, camera is to your live stream because it's just hardware and it can fire any external. Mm. And it's the same aspect ratio, so. Yeah. All right, it's much better than it was. I'm not seeing what you're seeing. <laughs> oh, wait, the YouTube oh, has a little bit of a delay. It's, it's yeah, a yeah. delay. Yeah. Okay. Like I don't I don't think that's true. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Back back and we can see what they used. Right, awesome. Whew, yeah, sorry guys. It's because I'm using, a, using an external capture software and whenever you have two things on at once, it just says, mm, yeah, how about now? So. I've seen other people successfully do it, so... Yeah, we what we need is a second native camera like that that mm. isn't a DSLR. Uh, the quality is just much nicer on single streams for DSLRs, but... Right. That's all right, See if we can get this. <laughs> you just can't give up, huh? I cannot give up. We have to have two cameras. People want to know what's going on behind the camera as well, because I'm not going to be the only person here, and other people are going to be dropping. Other in. people are going to be dropping in. So, well, do we have anything else? Uh, any other questions that I can? Um, no. So we have some. Somebody's, you know, asking about so. 
Hey, you got? Did you get the manual question? No. Oh, no. Somebody was like, uh, Joshua was like, it, it seems like you're just going manual. Like you don't have any instructions or like you're, you're not exactly following any kind of guide. You're just sort of doing it. Uh, yeah, that's right. I didn't even, I thought about grabbing a sample um, before I started, but I, I didn't do that. So yes, <laughs> um, I'm going to have to figure out, remember some of this stuff because it's been at least a, probably a couple of years since I've made one of these. Um, but at the same time, I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, do this thing I was I was thinking about it the other day. Uh, that when you when you think about when you think through an entire process, uh, there's studies that show that basically your brain goes through that process and and all the same things trigger as if you were doing it in real time. So if you walk yourself through a process and then uh, it looks, your brain looks exactly the same as if you are doing that, that same thing. Um, which, you know, studies are cool, but also we've known this for a while, like race car drivers uh, think about turns, like they run, run through turns without actually being in the car, much less on the track. Um, and they think about those turns and that's how they practice when they're not on the track because they can't can't always be there. So I guess when I do, whenever I'm designing a pattern, I'm kind of running through all of the seams as I'm cutting the pattern pieces up. Um, or as I'm grading it for sizing or things like that, I'm running through like, how's this going to work? As, you, as you're sewing it, like, am I going to come into a problem where I can't sew a full seam and I have to stop and do something else? Uh, what order of operations do I need to do? So I sort of think about that so many times while I'm designing the pattern itself that by the time I get to the sewing of the prototype, I already know, I've already done, I've already sewn it like five times. That's the lining. Like I said. All right. It's done. Took you about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. That's right. We sort of started streaming at uh 145. Where am I next thing? I'm going to do sleeves next. I've also made it a little bit easier on myself by like organizing all the pieces into bundles. Mm -hmm. So like I have a sleeve bundle. It's all rolled up nicely. So I pick, you know, roll it out and the first pieces that go together are on top. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm back. See if we can set this camera up without a tripod. Oh, oh, oh. Can I put this on? Paper towel roll? Mm hmm? <laughs> That's not too bad there. Your running commentary isn't distracting at all. Probably for anybody in this room. But it's great. It's good to have. Do it more? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Right, we are, we are back in business. Well, I, if I, once I get it set up, I'm going to leave. You say that. Listen, buddy. The people here wouldn't know what's going on if it weren't for me, okay? You might be right, because I'll just keep going. I'm usually a fairly quiet stitcher. <laughs> I don't get no appreciation down here. Probably less quiet than everybody else, though. Right. So you're expecting about uh, two hours, two and a half hours, you said? 
Yeah. I'm not sure how long it'll take, because it's been a while, but I think somewhere between two and two and a half. Huh? Yeah, the second camera is just not going to work. That's fine. Whoever's on the stream can just pull up a chair right over here. But then they can't look at the comments. I'm going to get your exposure sort of dialed in. <laughs> we did. We did just pull another a monitor out. What's that? We have a. a so I'm ask, somebody on stream was like, "How many machines do you have?" Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve ish machines, and I have a. Uh... Yeah. So what are you doing with the other sewing machine in the back? So I've got two sewing machines set up. Uh, one is for sewing the seams, like the, that's this one. And the other one is for top stitching, because we use a heavier weight thread for top stitching. So that machine is set for that tension, and it's got a different, uh, it has beefier feed dogs. Um, so it can, so if you're going through a lot more layers, it's, it's set up to go through more layers, which is what you're doing, you know, when you're sewing, a seam, you're going through two layers generally, um, and then when you're top stitching it, you're going through those two layers again, but folded over, so you're doing four layers, which, you know, is doubled every time you go over, when, every time you cross over another seam. Mm -hmm. So I got one one machine that's set up uh, for the heavy duty stuff. Once we figure out two cameras, we could figure out a three camera setup. I could have another another uh, setup on that other machine. But that's ambition, you know. I mean, I've got the I've got the setup figured out. It just it just doesn't work. Well, once you get it working, how's that? <laughs> Consistently. Yeah, uh, we just got another. Uh... Yeah, I'll have like a second camera like that one or something. Mm-hmm. But get a wireless one. Or honestly, my my other my video camera, my Z62, would be much better for mm. this than my DSLR. But I can't really have it set up for stream because I use it all the time. Hi, it's good. Hello, are you here to to oh, good -ish. to spell me on the camera? Please have a seat. Great. So, really, the only things to watch are like, well, I mean, obviously comments. It's weird to be side side view of yourself. Yeah, it's a little strange. <laughs> uh, if this freezes, um, that's called video capture. You can just deactivate. So just like hit the deactivate button. Okay. Other than that, watch your like microphones. Make sure it's not spiking too high. That's Great. pretty much it. Okay, okay bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> I don't know, I was signing up for this just now, but... <laughs> yeah, I got nothing else to do, that's cool. Yep. You came up to say hi. Yes. Hi, how's it going? You've been conscripted. How's your sewing going? So far, so far so good. The lining is done. Uh, I got both sleeves are basically done. Yep. Um, they need to be top stitched, but I'll move on to the next thing first. Somebody wants to know how many coats you've made of oh, these coats. I don't know what... How many Both of these coats? Yeah, well, this is the, the Ronin. Um, how, how many Ronins do you think you've sewn? I was saying less than five. Less than five? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's true, right? A couple of samples. A couple of samples. Um, 
and then this one. I think I made the women's first women's sample, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. I made the first Shogun, which kind of counts. It does kind of count, because it's basically that. Yeah. It's, just, it's, a, it's a more intense version of this. But I was saying I kind of I kind of sew it more times than that in my head. Yeah. Do you think I'm, about the whole process before you start? I do. I think about the whole process before I even start. Like Michael St. Aries trying to butter us up. He says, Hello and David are undoubtedly the most attractive business owners in the game. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Uh, sounds not good. Sounds not good? Oh, I just got a little we got a little knot on the bottom. It's fine. Yeah, you can tell a lot by the sound of your sewing machine. Mm -hmm. That is unusual. Do most sewers listen to their machines? I feel like everybody in this room probably listens to their machines pretty pretty closely. They're getting nods off screen. They're, yeah. they're listening to their sewing machines. They know when other people's bobbins run out. <laughs> they know when other people's bobbins will run out. Yeah. Wow. Because it rattles around in its little cage? It does when it's it spins when when it doesn't have as much thread on the bobbin left yes. it spins more freely. I think I know what sound you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's it's not weighed down by a lot of thread. So when it gets to the last couple of like rotations worth of uh, thread, it kind of just starts to sound a little tinny, and then that's it. And then it runs out, and you're like, "Can I get to the end of this scene? Will I make it?" I have to pull it out and screw yeah. it over. Um, somebody wants to know, Joshua Yankar wants to know, what would you say is the hardest part to make? Uh, oh yeah, hang on. Jacket. Okay. Of a jacket? I don't know. I don't love zippers. I don't think anybody really loves putting zippers in. If I find somebody who does, it'll be like, it'll be like finding a, a CPA. You're like, okay, someone who likes yeah, someone taxes. who loves doing taxes. You're just like, wow, you're in, hired. You can do all the zippers for everyone from now on. Uh, it's not because they're really terrible. They just fabric tends to be a little bit more flexible. Like you can stretch them and stuff, but zippers, like zippers, just are not flexible. So when a fabric starts to stretch and the zipper doesn't, doesn't then they, and they don't fully with the fabric. And they don't run like then you end up having to mess it, uh, having to take it out or whatever. So yeah. kind of have to watch it a lot more closely than most scenes. Do you, uh, does everyone use the same kind of machines or sets of sounds for each workstation? I definitely think people get attuned to their sewing machine. Tell me if I'm wrong. People do not like to switch station. No, none of us like, like to, to switch station because they get their tension just right, and they sort of know the quirks, and unique qualities of. Yep. Um, and they kind of get it at the right height. So we don't usually move people around from stations. We use mostly jukies in the uh, warehouse space because they're just really reliable and solid. Um, and, and like eminently like, available? Eminently available, yeah. <laughs> We've bought a lot of used machines, but they end up being more work than we save on their usedness. Yeah. Because they're funky or they're janky or they're broken, and then we spend hours fixing them, and that. Somebody else used it for twenty years, and and like its quirks sort of continued to develop that whole time, and now you're like coming in, uh, yeah. trying to learn that. Adopting stuff. like a like an eight year old dog, like they that dog has its habits, and you are not going to change them. It's exactly like adopting an older dog. Which is fine if that's what you're getting into, but, uh, yeah, harder than we're. Got a not pun. Jonathan Chung says, uh, "This we'll see what you guys do." Also, this is not the not you. I think there's a little sound delay picture, but fun, huge pun. I think I, uh, problem. With, the only real problem with not having a sample with me is that I think I'm top stitching You're this in the wrong up? direction. I'm making stuff up a little bit, but it's going to be fine. I guess that's your prerogative. It is. I don't know if we have a single Ronin. We here. do. We must. We must. We have a whole, all these racks. Is it at least a sewing sample? Probably. At least a sewing sample. Unless it's been stolen and sold in a rare find sale. 
marketing. Yes, the Brian, the marketing sample is Brian at Oticon. It's okay. I, I really don't need it because <laughs> what it's gonna look like. I have a logic around my. Um... Do you already talk about what you're making? What? Do people know what you're making? Yeah, we talked. We talked about it, but we can always repeat it because you never know who's who's yeah, on. Yeah, if wasn't people are just before. joining us, what are you making? I am making a special waterproof Ronin. We're talking to the back of your chair. Yes, yes you are, because that's the, this direction I'm facing. It is sometimes. Uh, and I'm fighting with my thread here, because talking and sewing at the same time doesn't always work. Yeah. That's what I just said. I don't think anyone can hear you over there. <laughs> this is what... This is an... Wait a minute, this is an older sample. Okay. So this is what it should look like when David is finished. Something like that. Something like that. It would be a little bit different because it's uh, a different cut. But... Yeah, this is the women's sample. Of the and this has got multiple colors, but... Yeah. We were talk David was talking earlier about the sort of paneling on top. He's sewing that part. He said like it might be a little bit strange with the material because this has different two, two different types of, of fabric. It has body material and then also like the shoulder material. And the and the Water sleeve mesh. material is even different from that. He's making this up is, a new. This is three different weights of the same material. New kind of Ronin. We are coming to Emerald City Comic Con. Thank you for asking. Happy to see you on the West Coast. We are also doing PAX Prime. PAX West. PAX West. God knows why they keep changing the damn name. I can't keep it straight. PAX West, previously known as PAX Prime, previously known as PAX West. <laughs> Before that, it was just PAX. Before that, just PAX. Prime, yes. Prime being the first, but then they put the directions on all the rest of them, and they were like, ah, oh, I guess we have to rebrand. We got a great spot this year. We will be on the Sky Bridge, which I'm very excited about. For PAX. For PAX. Prime, West, <laughs> Central. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I await the day that they, that, they, screen. that they run PAX North in Toronto. Right. PAX North in Toronto does logically make sense. Yeah, they just won't do it. They could do it like on the top border of like. <laughs> One time. One more arm and stream. Apologies. Uh -huh. Trying to filter out. Peep that great froggy cuff in the side view. Uh -huh. I would say something. Keep, keep talking to the one. Keep talking. I, uh, um, er. <laughs> we just posted an update. If you haven't read it, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on, and uh, most of it is good. Most of it is good. The Kickstarter is a bit challenging, but I think that's the way of the world, uh, and I think that's the way of Kickstarter, especially once first Kickstarter. From what I've spoken to other small business owners, they got their ass handed to them in their first Kickstarter, and they're having a similar experience. Um, but we're almost through it. Um, so check out those updates. There's a Kickstarter update today and a State of All Things update, which I stole the title of straight out of Amanda Palmer's blog. <laughs> you read her blog. I feel like it's probably a small audience overlap, so it's <laughs> relatively safe. But it's a good title for what we're doing. Yes, the Skybridge does feel like an important landmark. It will make us feel very important. The Skybridge um, is, is good at PAX. They don't turn the lights they on. They don't turn the lights on. That's right. Uh, and so it's being on the game devs. Exactly. So being on the Skybridge uh, is how we get natural sunlight because it's just 50 foot windows yeah. on all sides. Yeah. And uh, it's a total bottleneck. And uh, we will add to that by putting people in coats that they stand around in. And that will be great fun. It was good last year. I hope it'll be even better this year because last year was 50% capacity. Yeah. And it was a solid show last year. We had a really nice turnout, and no one got COVID. Also, yeah. like the new 
we had a good show. Oh, no one got COVID. Those are our new success metrics. Oop, Oop the trolley. <laughs> Doesn't seem to matter. What's um, our, it's, it can't be worse than any of the stuff that we've done so far. Hey, hey. But, but <laughs> oh, the moving of the trolley. <laughs> moving of the it trolley. It had zero impact. No, the camera wasn't working and. Um, uh, Teresa Wynn says your transparency for the Kickstarter has been much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, it's it's it feels... been great to actually share the process with everybody. Um, nothing smooth and easy about it, but uh, that's one thing you can count on us for. We will be transparent with the ups and the downs. Yeah, uh, transparency for us, it's the obvious choice. Partly, I think, because having questions sitting there unanswered anywhere stresses all of us out sure. like yeah you know so so when people are like what, what's happening with this what's happening with that all of us are like oh god we have to answer every question yeah um and it's like it's a lot easier you know you, you ever hear that saying that's like uh if you don't lie you don't have to keep your story straight yeah <laughs> we it's just so much it seems like so much work to sort of like not address these issues head on and just be like here's what's going on uh but anyway that's part of our part of our company culture personal personal philosophy personal culture personal yeah uh, has this experience soured us on kickstarters for a while and would we do it again for the right product are you not interested in messing with that for a while what do you think would we do another kickstarter uh yes yes short I, answer I, yes i do think so um, I think that the Kickstarter process was is really cool. Yeah. I think the manufacturing anything in this era of COVID is just beastly. Um, yeah, I mean it can only get better from. So here. I think it would. Yes, I think we would do another Kickstarter. In some ways, we have like a nice little starter list now, so the next one might be a little easier. That's the theory. Um, and it it. The running of the Kickstarter was a great experience. The fulfilling of the Kickstarter is a much more challenging. But we also made it we really, might just really not, hard for ourselves. Yeah, we might just not overcommit yeah. quite as much next time. Right. If we just like make a product instead of like 12 interlocking products, uh, that would be a good start. And then maybe... A non-Voltron Kickstarter. Yeah, like, and then maybe like something we definitely produced before, like maybe something... In a, clothing product category i don't know so uh yeah things things we might try differently ah how, somebody asked how did sdcc go you were there how was fdcc it was great fun yeah you had a good day yeah good it was i had a good time it was my first time there yeah my first time back in san diego since i was three years old yeah uh so you didn't recognize anything no, I didn't really. I didn't remember any of the restaurants that we used to go to. If we ever went to restaurants when I was, about, I was three years old, no yeah. idea. Um, but yeah, it was it was really fun. the The crowd was really cool. I really enjoyed the uh, Volante closet post <laughs> because it, having a ten by ten with clothing on all sides definitely yeah feels like a closet. You know, even the shortest among us uh, could just reach across and touch yeah. both sides of the booth. Like, and the shortest among us was like, I think, I like think five, 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 six, five, six. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Yeah, it was a small, it was a small space, but it's great yeah. to be. In some ways, it's like San Diego Comic Con is a little. I won't say it's overblown. It's a wonderful show. It has a really unique <laughs> quality. But having done it in New York for many, many years. People from San Diego Comic Con who like originated there think it's the center of the universe, and um, it was a great show. Yeah, it's a great show. It was a great show. It is a great show. Um, and there, it has a really unique crowd audience feel. Like it, 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 it's still the place where everyone reveals the, you know, like the new Lord of the Rings trailers and um, the new Star Trek stuff that we get to look forward to. Um, so many new jackets to make. Right, so that's really exciting, and it's a, it adds something special to the show. Do yeah. you want to know what else we were going to add to the operator system for stretch goals? Ooh. It's been about a year, and I'm not sure that I remember. Do you remember? 
I had a really cool idea for a a different frame, like a sling frame. Oh. Um, that would be like a one like shoulder a one -shoulder frame. Bag? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that would have all the same, you know, hardware, but it was just built for a single shoulder use. Um, that would be more for light carry or easy access, that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's that, cool. That was something that I had wanted to do. I also thought like a... Oh, the Discord is reminding us that we had a laptop sleeve design that we were going to launch we did. alongside it. We did. I wasn't super excited about it. Why were you not excited about it? Uh, I you do... don't have a laptop and carry a laptop? Because I don't have a laptop. I don't care about laptops. Okay. Um, no, it was because I... Uh, I and because I don't have a laptop, I don't really know the, the like needs of a laptop case, yeah. so it felt like I wasn't I wasn't sure that I was going to add too much to the laptop sleeved market. But the matching, David, the matching. I understand the matching is important, but I've got I've got grander ideas. I understand. Somebody thinks you should make a corgi frame to have the corgi carry. His oh own yeah, treat. that's right. Alternate frames for different size dogs. Alternate frames for different size dogs. Yeah. Please. And a and like a whiskey barrel uh, attachment just for like for the, uh, for the Saint burner. Bernard. Yeah, for the that's right, Saint Bernards. Yeah, I did think of a. I had an idea for like a water bottle attachment, like a sort of light hike sort of bag. Uh, yeah. Um, I think we had some other colors that we were going to unlock as well. Some like. Uh, like, you know, we unlocked Saint. We had another couple of colors in the mix that we were going to release, be available. Sort of add, add options, add variety. Yeah, uh, I'm, on the other hand, I will say, kind of glad we didn't hit those get stretch goals in yeah. certain ways. Because yep, yep. it turned yeah. out to be plenty, plenty, plenty of, tough. Of parts. Yeah, because it's like over 10,000 individual items that were yeah. used. And the variety in that 10,000 is massive. Yeah, Only like 2,500 full stacks. Knows and suffered under the quantity of different bags that we made. For our making. <laughs> our making. We get yeah. an email every day from the factory being like, we finished another 25 bags. Should we ship them today? Or do you want them all at the end of the week? I think. We, yeah, we were like, please send us an email every day because you've proven to be unreliable. <laughs> please keep us in the loop. You know, everybody makes big promises. They're like, yeah, we could definitely do that. For that much money, we can definitely do that. They made big promises, and they also had, like, a solid six months of them sitting in their warehouse where they didn't touch them. That's... So they get absolutely no sympathy from me. I'm not giving, I'm not giving them sympathy. <laughs> None. No sympathy. <laughs> Have you told them who your waterproof Ronin is for? Yeah, uh, but I will say it again. I'm making this waterproof Ronin for my brother uh, because I owe him a birthday present. Um, and he wanted a Ronin, and we've been we've been sort of talking. He doesn't own one of our jackets yet at all. That's kind of bonkers. It is. It's totally nuts. I think you promised him a number of jackets before now. See, I have. Uh, I keep making him long jackets, and he doesn't wear long jackets. So, like, we, you know, he was in the shoot for the Lord of the Rings, the, um... Yes. The Gondor Gambeson. The Gondor Gambeson. That's um, David's brother, if you're that's, wondering. That's my brother. Almost all of David's family has modeled on our website at some point. It's true. We still have to convince we my sister. We still have to get your sister. That's... Um, my mom just was most recently uh, posted in the... Uh, Voyager jacket. Yep. Pretty cute when people are like, I love that you show more. Yeah. Or I love oh, this, or I like, love this I model. Love this model rocks. And I'm like, do I know this person? Uh, I hope this person is in on the joke. This and is if they mother. aren't, it's still great. The model does rock. Uh, but anyway, he's done like a bunch of those. And yeah. we, and, but then I'm like, do you want it? And he's like, I honestly won't wear it. You should just sell it to somebody. I'm like, okay, well, fine. I guess I'll do that. Um, so I've never just sat down and made him a jacket to his specs. Josh, 
question what Yankower wants to know. Once we get rid of all the materials and assemble bags, are you going to be able to reclaim much office space? The short answer is no. We actually rented a separate space to fulfill our Kickstarter because it's that much stuff. Yeah, it's a um, whole space. And we are now being kicked out of that space because we thought we would be done by now. Or we're not kicked out, but like our lease is ending for July. And we don't want We're not going to gonna pay another... for a whole other month of storage. So in fact, we're just going to have stuff everywhere for a couple of weeks. Which I think everyone is looking forward to. Don't you think? Oh yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> We will only be slightly overrun by Kickstarter stuff. We will be completely overrun by Kickstarter stuff for a couple of weeks. But, there were, uh, there were yeah. also a couple of months in there where we had like three pallets worth of stuff, like plastic fabric. bits, yeah, waiting fabric. to be sent out. And then the fabric arrived and we cut it. So yeah, I guess it will be it will be clearer. Yeah, no, it's definitely nice to get stuff out out the door. Uh, would revisions to the operator system be on the table once the bags have been in the wild for a while? What do you think of that? We <laughs> I think made so. a ton of revisions in the process of making it already. Yeah. And we never really stop adding we little, adjusting little things. I'm going to say it's unlikely that we'll ever completely be done with a pattern forever. Unless we discontinue the product altogether. Unless we give up on that product altogether. So, uh, I think we're in the train of continuous, continuous quality improvement, uh, yeah. for better or for worse. Uh, that's definitely true. I do think, uh, even just from the feedback we've been receiving so far, not that anything has been terrible, but I do think that there are things that we could change. Um, I'm interested in hearing more. Before we, I mean, obviously we want to finish this run before we produce more, but what, I, I'll want to wait a little bit because I do think we've never had this much. Um, this is probably the most of an item we've sold because we have like 2,000 yeah. orders. At one, you know, at one time. Right. I think we probably sold more eagles overall, but right. it's like that's seven years. And, yeah, know, that was seven years of eagles and just two months of Kickstarter, or like not even 30 something days of Kickstarter. How many days was it? 36 days? Something like that. Yeah. 21 days? Something like that. Not that long. Right. So we... Um, yeah. yeah, so I want to hear more about what people like and what people don't like. And, you know, even just, like, small things. People don't realize they're giving me feedback when they give me when they say things. Yes. They say something, and I'm like, oh, that could I could do this. Or, that's a great idea. I could make it more intentional. Yeah. Um, it kind of works, and I would love it for, for it to work intentionally. That comes up quite often. I have to say, little dog operator system. Normal. I would love to make that content. Shoot that content. Shoot that content. Film that, like, we could have a dog visiting weekend. Yeah, man. I mean, come on. Isn't that not the dream? It is. <laughs> I guess so. Is that not the dream? I mean, if that was truly the dream, we'd be making dog clothing already. That's true. That's true. It just sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Joshua Ankar says, I have two of those eagles, still my faves. <laughs> no, he didn't say faves. He said favorites. Uh-huh. Because he's not. <laughs> he's not you. Oh, my faves. Uh, uh, Josh, has, Josh has a bunch of cool stuff, though. I'm, if, I'm remembering the name correctly. Yes, yes. It's great to be able to recognize people's names. I feel like we have a really cool fan base who are, yeah, who show up regularly. Even in the chat, not necessarily from a purchasing perspective, but like yeah. a being in the community perspective. That's, and that's awesome. And thank you for being with us. Whoever. Whoever you are. are. If you're listening, thank if you for being here. Probably you're on that list. Uh. Yeah, and that's what I love about having the Discord, too. Yeah. Jonathan Chung, another name I recognize. Was there any micro spaces on operator patches? <laughs> no. That's we something we could add. We did talk about a patch. We did. Um, See, that's feedback you just gave me without even realizing it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, we, by choice, didn't do that, but we did talk about it quite a bit. 
You can definitely get iron on Velcro patches. Uh, yeah. Really easily. Or stitch on ones. Stick on ones. It's an easy mod to make. I'm going to have to have my back to the camera for a little bit. Great. Because I got a, I got I a stack of... I back to the camera. I know. I got a stack of things to top stitch here. Yes. In a minute, I'm gonna have to run off camera for a few minutes. Oh. Whenever Megan's done over there with the snap machine. So, Joshua also got an Inquisitor. I haven't been able to wear it because it's been 90 degrees, but there's, is there a trick to dealing with the zippers and the buttons panel? For what? The zippers and the buttons panel, the sort of like front bib section. I don't really feel like there is, but maybe I, I think it's easier because I was here for the designing of it. Sometimes we don't know. What? I, it, complicated. Start over. The Inquisitor. Remember? Is there a trick to dealing with the zippers and button panel? Yes. He says, it feels like I'm taking it off entirely, putting the <laughs> coat on, and then buttoning it back on. The front panel. I see. Yeah, I mean, you can... Uh, you can sort of leave the left side snapped all the way up. Mm hmm and then and and then do the zipper and then sort of leave it it'll just be hanging but it's there and then you can uh and then you can button it back up after the zipper you don't have to take the whole thing off yeah but yeah that was that was something that we sort of went back Played there was with. a few yeah. iterations of that the first iteration was a little bit more like the the shinobi yes a little more crossbody yeah, with a, with a yep. buckles that actually went all the way around. So it looked like you had a belt. I remember that version, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't long ago, so. I'm glad you remember it. Ah, here's the timely question. Will the eagle or a variation of it ever return again? Oh, yes. Incredibly timely. Mm hmm. <laughs> Not by that name. Not by that name. How's that? <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> it's so Thursday, two forty-five. Two forty-five. We are sewing a. I'm not, but David is sewing a waterproof Ronin jacket. If you are joining us for the first time. And you are commentating. And I am. Hanging out more than anything. You are more than welcome to ask us questions in the comments section. To are you we'll do also, our best to answer them. Are you also watching the Discord? Am I also watching Discord? Sort of. Okay. That would sounds like a no. No, it's a no. Do do do. What about another run of the Washingtons by 00J says? Uh, I doubt the Washington? It, my friend. I'm yeah. sorry. I did I did try and design a new Washington. It could happen. Yeah, I did. Hmm. Um I called it the Marquis. Oh yeah. Marquis No, I don't yeah. remember that. It was longer than the Washington. Ah, so a totally different jacket that also had buttons, is what you're saying. <laughs> it was a new Washington. I'm sorry, a new a new Washington. It, it when followed... David is like, I redesigned this, except that it's longer, and it had zippers instead of snaps, and it also <laughs> has a hood, and no standing collar, but actually it's exactly the same. In my mind, it is the same. <laughs> Rarely seems the same to the rest of us, but that's all right. Um, Teresa Wynn says, should a lot of people be paying close attention to the future AC-15 collection releases? I guess so. Yes. You should. Yeah. Yes. There are some, there are some releases coming. There are some releases in that collection coming. That may surprise you. Some are surprising, yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to what the Dragon Age collection will look like. Us too. It's a brand new thing. Very exciting. 
kind of a new area. Um, I love the Dragon Age kind of audience and fandom. Um, I think it's a good fit. Culturally, it's a really good fit. Culturally, it's a good fit. Yeah, very queer friendly, very open, very story and adventure, you know, focused. Yep. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, I think there's, I mean, there's plenty of stuff to co to sort of draw from. Yeah. I'm not. I'm. I can't say I really have a lot of clear ideas where I'm going. I have like you better, vague ideas. You better play the game. I do. I mean, I. I, I know you have a little. I have a little. I. I need to get back into it, play yeah. some more, and get into the vibe. Yes. Um. Same with Mass Effect. I just need to like get in the zone. <laughs> I started Mass Effect and really liked the aesthetic. I'm just not. I don't have the commitment. <laughs> it, I rather. It, be, it requires a lot of commitment. I rather cook. I'm just not. I'm not a dedicated gamer, y'all. And besides, we really only have one TV and one PlayStation in our house, so I had high competition. A lot of competition. Not really worth it. <laughs> and generally, your experience with competition, especially when it comes to certain things, is is just go ahead. Go ahead. You can have it. Unless it's cards. If it's cards, I get very serious very fast. Right. I don't know why, but but if it, if it the involves... inner card shark in me gets gets activated. If it involves a ball, you're just like, you can have it. Oh, yeah, no, no, no sports with balls. Thank you. Joshua says, I know you're super busy, but I could definitely see commissioning a replacement inquisitor, inquisitor with buttons, panel, and embroidery. Mm. Uh, unlikely, my friend. I am so sorry. We don't have an embroidery machine here. Yeah, we, we've been talking about getting one, but it's, we don't. They're bonkers expensive. And, uh, and they're even more expensive if you want them to be production ready. Yeah, and to be good enough to actually make a great quality product, that it's not likely. It's not at the top of our wish list of items, product of, of machines, machines. Toys. Sorry. Don't feel obligated. Okay. Yeah. I am. I'm having a fine time. Have you done any Templar themed coat instead of assassin themed ones? Have you how do you imagine that would feel different? Have we released released any Templar themed coats? No. Have we designed some? <laughs> Maybe. I no, Cards Against Humanity is not the kind of cards we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about poker or canasta, like strategic old lady games are my my area of expertise. Poker. Is it a dip? Is it a dip from Canasta to poker, or from poker to Canasta? <laughs> I like card games. Most card games. I like hearts. I like uh, rummy. No. I like large strategic board games as well, but that's a little bit more involved. I do get very comp competitive in those areas. Canasta. <laughs> yeah. The gambling in East Hampton, Massachusetts is a big scene. Yeah. We got we got Springfield. Oh yeah, great. We yeah, got they got that casino. How do I feel about spades? I have not played spades. I'm always up for learning a card game. But we I, play hearts though. I do play hearts, and we I play a mean game of and hearts. To slaughter people. <laughs> well, but then you know. Yeah. Won't say anything nasty about you. <laughs> you honestly don't slaughter me as much as you would like to think. Oh, I do. I slaughter you. There's no competition. <laughs> it's really a win, though. It, yeah, that's right. That's the question. Being the best heart is really a win. Oh, it is a win. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they answer the question fine. straight. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, could you hear your bobbin running out before it actually happened? I, I did, yeah, but it, now it's all tangled. Oh. Next fast enough. Got a new one. Jeremiah's got something to do with his hands now. I sure do. The marketing team makes a foray into the production studio. I don't think anyone would hire us to sew, but <laughs> we have. 
Everyone was hired to sew. Yeah, yeah, sort of. We weren't all good at it, but we had to make masks and there was really nothing else to do. Hey, Ropo wants to know, what is your favorite jacket to wear slash make? I'm suspecting those might be different answers. <laughs> it could be different, yeah. Um... Oh, is that a gray, is that a gray bobbin? It's totally a gray bobbin. Looked like it was black. Here we do. Um, my favorite jacket to wear slash make. It's, it probably actually isn't too different of a jacket. I like the Jonin. And the Jonin is, I also really like my Shinobi. Um, but you don't wear that that often. I have to be honest. I, I haven't worn the Shinobi in quite a while. There was a year where you wore the rook exclusively for many, many months. Yep. Because oh. we live in Massachusetts. Old planet. Yes. We'll say there are some jackets we make that are more practical to wear here than other places. Yes. Um, What's your favorite jacket to make? The newest one. The newest one. Whatever the newest, is the newest one. thing. David is obsessed with the newest one, which is fair enough. It's kind of his job. Jeremiah is also into the newest one. That's true. He likes getting it, photographing a new jacket. Because it's just... Called out, yes, different. called out. He likes what's newest. It actually has very little to do with... Oh, yeah, what's your what favorite jacket? Is. Which one did I just make? Mm -hmm. um, or worse, which one am I currently about to make? Thinking about making. Doesn't exist yet, but has like a sketch or a concept. That's really his favorite jacket. It's the, the, the jacket on the horizon. That's where the hype is at. That's right. Where did the shoulder strap on the Jonin come from? I haven't seen anything like that before. How did you come up with that? I always think of those like ninja umbrellas, which is I know not where you came up with it from, but you know, you, you oh, it's like not it's not totally wrong. Umbrellas. Yeah. That that's what invented that whole concept of a crossbody strap for a sword. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah, the umbrella company, it came from the umbrella. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> nobody previously had a crossbody strap for a sword. Yeah, so that's that's where that strap came from. It mm -hmm. was basically it was I wanted to have something that. It's your modern ninja. Sort of emulated the crossbody like shoulder strap for carrying a sword around. Here you go. Uh, I gotta do some snaps, so I'm gonna go away. Hi. They're they're far away, so you need to keep keep the conversation rolling. Alright. Bye. I actually am not I'm lying. I gotta do something else first. I don't have a mobile camera, sorry. We don't. One of these days we're gonna figure out the sort of head strap. The head strap camera. They yes. sell little wireless cameras, but they're pretty low low resolution. Yeah. We don't really exactly do this kind of thing that often, so Yes. I think the last time we did this was about two, three months ago, two months ago. Which is the shame. April? Uh, whatever the anniversary. Yeah, yeah that was three April? months. April? Yeah. Three months ago. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, three months ago. Yeah, yeah no, you're not. I was just like, April sound feels like it was about a decade. Yeah, I know, right? Which is not accurate. No, Here we are. It does feel like it. Kind of funny. There's there is a quiet team of people who are sewing along, which they do every day. And David, uh, getting all this attention for his sample. Yes, go ahead and show. Yeah. Completely messed this up. Let me know if it yep, freezes. Yep. No, it just looks fine. Oh, but now we're looking very closely at that table. Yeah, no, we're doing it again. Uh, okay, make sure everything's. Camera's very hot. Can move a little bit with it. This is very like creeping up on the back of someone who's about to get eaten by a monster cam. It's all the way over there. One. You're never, you're never gonna get there with that short little uh, cable. But like, here is Megan sewing along in the background, <laughs> pretending like we're not up to some nonsense in their normal workspace. No one and elected to, to be on camera. And Emily's office is back there in that nook. Oh, oh, we get the zoom cam on Emily's door. Emily, turn your head around the side of the door. Oh, it's super out of focus, but there's Emily. Okay. Ellen, who's plugged into headphones and may or may not know, there we go, that we're talking to her. <laughs> yeah. 
Please. Earthy. Ah. Why would we not make very sad? Please. Okay, I'll talk to her. That's an error. <laughs> <laughs> I went to put it in. I was like, oh. Earthy the dog? David Wise back there in the corner? All right. Yes. Well, we're just here screwing around. That's, I mean, that is kind of what marketing is. <laughs> I don't know if I'd, all right, okay, all right. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Production <laughs> is the sensible and consistent making of things. And marketing is all the goofy stuff around that to make the things available. Oh, I'm not no. sure I put on enough makeup for that. That's, much uh, that's a manual focus lens, so I had to focus. Um, yeah. Uh, so they want to, Joshua wants to know, how large is the studio? Does it feel good or tight? And how many tables do people get at their workspace? Yeah, so people get two sewing machines and two tables, usually, at their workspace. Or one table and a shared table. Um, because you kind of have to lay stuff out. There's a lining table machine and then a top stitch. And then um, move through the different pieces of the project. Um, and then there's the big central table where the, the whole thing gets laid out, so all the features are available. Um, our studio used to feel really large and spacious. We were upstairs, we were in about, was it? Six. 6,000 square feet, or like 59,000 square feet. We moved down here, and this is just about seven, I think? Seven and a half thousand square feet? Ah, that bell. Is the time for snack slash break slash pee bell. Um, but yeah, so 7,000 feet felt really large a few months ago. Now it doesn't feel so large. Some of that is the Kickstarter, but... Uh, not enough of it. Not enough of it. So we're, <laughs> I don't know, we kind of, like like a goldfish, tend to fill the space available or something. That goldfish? That's what they do. So we, we seem to fill the space available to us, for better or for worse. So, uh, and maybe get tapping over there. Here we go. You want to duck, duck, Ellen? Just kidding. Just, you can duck. He's gonna try and zoom in over here, but you can just carry on. It's not that exciting now. I didn't set myself up for multiple snaps. Finished snapping already? No, no. <laughs> this is the funniest way to watch someone put on snaps possible. <laughs> like, like a wildlife yeah, footage. Yeah, like, like super shaky cam, like long distance wildlife footage camera. Be shakier. It could be. It's hard to hold a camera. Even, I don't have any image even. stable things. <laughs> so what that thing over there is, is a kick press. That red thing. Oh wow, look at those. But what? His shorts. <laughs> damn it. Damn you it. had to show his shorts. Um, damn it. I figured the camera would be above the desk. It's hot in here, man. I don't know what your problem is with shorts. They're honestly one of the greatest clothing inventions ever made. Uh, says the man from Florida. He's currently wearing pants. Who's currently wearing <laughs> pants in 90 degree heat. <laughs> In other news, Abby Cook says, Hi, Volante team. My boyfriend and I love your work. I actually met him because he had the eagle. I didn't know how Volante, I didn't know Volante design, but the code was so interesting. I had to talk to him. Good choice, Abby. Yeah. It's clearly got taste. Clearly got taste. And I like someone who's not afraid to be like, wow, that's a really interesting person. Let me go talk to them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you suddenly have 2K more square feet and a reasonable budget. What do you put into that space? Oh, gosh. I think we would probably put in some more dedicated marketing space so that we have less of this silliness. <laughs> uh, can we get me another set of sewing machines? So we would so get can... David a sample set of sewing machines so he's not as much in the midst of things. I'm not sure this elbow cam. Yeah, I is, think no. We're going back. Here. I won't focus on your face, but I do need to focus. I mean, that's really fine. I I'm not ashamed of my face. Focus on. Focus on. I just don't know if I need to be zoomed into every pore. So I have to zoom in to get the focus. Okay. It would be nice to have a uh, 
like to do things like this more often and to make the yeah, um, to have a space that was sort of set up for it. I think people really enjoy the design and like production process. Yeah. So to have kind of a, a dedicated like streaming, like a, I think it would get. I think it could get really popular. People yeah. really seeing that kind of. I um, mean, we have, we found there was a lot of like new people who came into these. Yeah. Nice way to be accessible or something. I was thinking it'd be pretty cool to to sew a a new prototype or like a. Mm -hmm marketing sample of something yeah. like at the while releasing it simultaneously yes i think we will try that like do the whole stream like and then like some of these you can have them now or or even just like i'm gonna make this thing uh and then sort of at the end when it's revealed the page the page goes live like when Excellent. the final finished yeah. thing goes yeah i think it's a cool idea might be fun nice we have to. It's like we were talking about making a big, a big coat for this stream. Yeah. And we're like, why like don't you make one of these? Five it's hour like, stream. It's like yeah, it's a five hour stream. It's a long time. Yeah, big coats take a long time to make. David makes it look pretty easy over there, but. <laughs> Even that little curve. I mean, you do really make it look extremely easy. It's a little bit rude, I would just like to say. Just making it look how it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> Super easy. Oh. Just making it look how it is. I think it gets me in sewing, and I've sewn a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's honestly not the actual, the actual act of, of sewing is the easy part for me. Get everything lined up and conceptually trying to think through what it's supposed to look like before it gets turned into an actual garment is the yeah. hardest part for me. Yeah. Did that like? I'm actually pretty decent at that part. Yeah. I really struggle with the actual physical going. I'm not. I like I'm not precise enough. I'm not the measure twice, cut once kind of person. I'm the, like, let's try it and then maybe we can tweak it from there. Yeah. When when you first started. It's not working so. When you first started, David, did you start more from like the figuring it out perspective, or did you start like with the sewing and then the trying to design came afterward? Mm. Mm. Uh, you you answer. I okay. don't. I honestly don't. I I probably figured it out. I think David knows exactly the steps that he's gonna follow. He may not know exactly like he's like okay, this portion will go together like this. I may have this to wing it at certain go points. Together like this, exactly. At certain junctures, I may have to be like. Mm. That's not how I thought that was going to go. But uh, he, I think, thinks really 3D, which is an unusual, I think, way to, from my perspective, an unusual way to, I haven't met a lot of people who can conceptualize a whole pattern before putting it down. There we go. Uh, yeah. We're almost, we're getting pretty close. Are we? Closing is always my favorite part, because... Yeah, from looking we're like not a weird quite garbage there. Bag to looking like a fabulous check. And in this case, a, a, a bunch of slices of weird garbage bags. <laughs> yes. But we are, we are getting pretty close. When you have David's skill level, is sewing stuff like this relaxing slash meditated? I spend the whole time terrified I'm going to sew a bubble into the sea. What do you think? Is it meditative? I think you love it. I do. Um, is it like driving? You just kind of go in the zone and you just do yeah, it? Yeah, it's a bit like driving. I kind of know where I'm going. Um, yep. I don't need that anyway. Yeah. Anyway. It's on the floor now. Uh, yeah, I do I do kind of know where I'm going and what, I'm, what I plan on doing. Um, there are times where I'm like, I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, and that, I mean, that's not really so much stressful as, like, if I don't have time to redo it, that's where it becomes stressful. But I just have a little bit of time where I could just recut a whole jacket and be like, all right, I'll just start over. Yes. That's, that's way easier. What do you want, Snow? Jonathan Chung? I'm curious, how did you get into sewing? Um, kind of a broad question. It is kind of a broad question. 
Better than selling books. Did I do this right? No, I didn't do it right. But I caught myself. Really? Because I was trying to figure out, I was trying to, like, listening to the question. I don't usually field questions while I'm sewing. This is true. But it's a, no. It's a good exercise. You've done this jacket enough times that you're not so much figuring it out, I think. Yeah, yeah no, it's just, like I said, when I, when you ask, what's my least favorite part? It's putting on a zipper. Yeah, least favorite part is putting on a zipper, and it is the part that he messed up this time. <laughs> while we distracted him. Yep. Hey, Roko says, I heard sewing requires being able to think upside down, inside out, and backwards. That, I think, is 100% accurate. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a four-dimensional thinking. I knew. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so why did you know I was going to say that? Because you knew that I would be right, too? Yeah, because you have to conceptualize what it's going to look like before it's finished. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's four-dimensional thinking. I mean, I get it. It's still dumb, but I get it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Just a phrase. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah, you do have to conceptualize what it's going to be at the end. And, and, like, what your steps are to get there. And what your steps are to get there. And, cert and in certain cases, it's like, yeah... Order of operations isn't isn't four dimensional thinking so much. It's that you make sure you do it in the right order. That's time, isn't it? Time is a dimension. Yeah, or, but or sequence is a dimension. Isn't it? But a sequence is is a list. Okay. Um, That's anyway. I will say that a lot of creative endeavors, I think, probably have a similar pattern, whether it be writing or taking photos or sculpting or whatever. Like you have to have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like in the end. It's the yeah. end of the pee break. That's what that other bell says. Um, but what I mean is like something like, I'll get there in a minute, but when you're putting, uh, when you're closing sleeves, you close the jacket and then you close the sleeve. And I, and it took me a while to figure out how to do it efficiently and like how to basically how to skip some steps. Um, so you should sew the main thing together, then turn the whole jacket inside out or right side out, and then sew the sleeves, and then like pull the sleeves back through that same opening and sew them together that way because it was hard to see how it works um, until I figured it out. It does. That definitely feels like a, I have to sew it like this because it's going to need to be sewn for me to sew the next thing. Uh, I don't understand that, but I understand the idea. I'm gonna. Tr I'll try and explain that again. That's okay. I mean, he looked at me like he thought I would explain <laughs> yeah, yeah. it too. So fine. That's all right. I'll look at Emily like she knows what I'm talking about. Emily maybe does know what you're talking about because she also sews like a maniac. Well, the be the, the real test of your skill level is how well you can explain it to a layperson. So. <laughs> is that a real test? Yeah. Huh. That's what they say. They say, "What if you're excellent at something but lousy at giving direction?" Terrible at it, I guess. Not I guess. <laughs> Um, it's the difference between a master and a mentor. Yeah, something like that. I think it's a mastery question. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, I'm going to step out. Are you? You want to hang out? Okay. Um, I will come back whenever it's over. We get finished. Uh, well, I'll try to keep an eye on it, and I will try to get the other cam and sort of make it bigger, and then we can kind of show off the finished product. Is it? We'll probably want to see what it looks like on David. Or uh, is it? What size? Is it similar size? To you? It's a 43. It'll be a little big, but... Hey, Fit, you best. <laughs> he runs away. They want to know what got you hooked in sewing. Oh. Uh, now that you've put the zipper on, and the hardest part is over. <laughs> yes, now that I've put the zipper on. You're going to change feet? Yeah, I got to... Because I've set the zipper, but now I need to sew the seam that the zipper is attached to. Right. Heat changing and everything. You see, these are the parts that I never bothered to do in sewing, so my sewing never looked like it. You know, it won't be clean without it. I know. But I... I'm not excellent at that. <laughs> and my bobbin ran out. On top of everything. On top of everything. Um, I don't know. I wanted to make some stuff. Short, short, short answer. Best answer ever. I don't yeah. know. I wanted to make some stuff. This is the, the least satisfying. The most motivational answer you could. Use. The least satisfying answer is I, I had some things that I wanted to make because I wanted to wear them. Um, 
and then I had to learn how to sew in order to do that. I don't know how to. I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> what what made me want to sew? I is I kind of I kind of wanted to sew. Wanted sew, or did you want the stuff that you would get out of sewing? Uh, some people do pottery to like make beautiful items. That's right. Some people do pottery to like sit to there do and pottery. play with mud and do the pottery part. That's right. Uh, you more, I guess I, I guess yeah, both. Oh, yeah. I did like the idea of sewing mm -hmm. because I do because I like the idea of making my own stuff. Yeah. Um. But the finished product was probably the stronger of the two motivators. Mm -hmm. So you're moving the zipper up so you can sew past. Yeah, I got the this zipper head. The zipper pull here that's yep. kind of kind of in the way. And I've already done I've done the end of this seam and I'm going back up from the other side so that it's all easy to match up. It's basically it's pinned. It's pinned at the end by stitching. Yeah. What are you excited about coming up in the media? I'm really excited about all the stuff that we just made that we just designed for Texas. Yeah, there are some. I think they were asking like TV shows and oh. games and stuff like that. <laughs> it's a total random side question. Yeah, I I'm excited about all sorts of stuff. I am ex I'm very excited for uh, the new Lower Decks season. There is a new season of Lower Decks coming, and it's like August fifth. It's pretty soon. Twenty third, but yeah. Twenty third. Oh, wrong again. It's okay. Uh, but that's going to be really fun, and the crossover between that and, or the, I guess, two crossovers between that and, um, yes. Strange New Worlds. Have you seen, there was a tweet recently with, um, Ethan Peck and the guy who plays Boimler, or is the voice actor? No. Okay, well, they're getting ready to be bros. Pretty cute. That's great. Uh, I did see... The... They're both, like, this, pretty much the same age, and they're, like, both trying to be actors, and, you know, they're... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they uh, are actors. They're not trying to be actors. They've made it. But they're like, trying, but al but also succeeding. But right. Also, like, they're early in their career. Yeah. Uh, I did see the clip of them, uh, Boimler and Mariner, uh, crashing the panel, the oh, Strange yeah. New Worlds panel at, at San Diego. I didn't know that happened. Yeah, they just came it's in cute. and crashed it up on stage. And they were like, you know, do we get to hang out? Do we get to come on? Why didn't? How come nobody uh, introduced us? Right. And ah. they do. They do pretty much look like their characters. They do so. look a little bit. Although Boiler, I like imagined being skinnier and nerdier, like because <laughs> his voice is so like, hey, I'm Boiler. Like, yeah. He, he just and of course his character is kind of like a suck up. Yeah. Well, is a suck up. Is a hundred percent a suck up. Um. So, but he, you know, pretty. Bit, I don't know, like yeah. dude. Yeah, he's just he's less of that, yeah. but he does. He doesn't look like a skinny nerd. He looks like, you know, an aspiring actor in Hollywood or whatever. Right. What does the actress look like for Mariner? I don't what? know. I having not seen him at all. Yeah. Kind of looks like Mariner. Definitely. Funny. And they definitely have the the physical sort of body language bearing. Appropriate for their characters, and they 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 did sort of they did a bunch of like improv when they went up there. Funny. Like they improved with everyone, and it was just it was good. That seems like a lot of fun. Yeah. They're into their own characters, which is great. Yeah, I do feel like Star Trek does a really nice job of hiring young actors and giving them an opportunity to have a great fan and franchise. Like I know when Sonequa Martin Green was uh, first on hired as Michael Burnham. Mm -hmm. And she'd been in other stuff. It wasn't like she was an unknown actress, but still, I think it pushed her. Like, they don't just hire people who have a proven, clear track record. They hire interesting new faces. Who, like are, who are appropriate for the role. Yes. Huh. Do, do, do.
I should have, when I was in San Diego, I should have spent more time trying to get on panels, or not on panels, but into panels. Yeah. I think you just kind of got rocket, rocketed out to San Diego and back. Yeah. Because of the timing of it. And I might have had more time to, to sort of think about what panels I would want to be at. Right. And reach out to people that I knew. Right. Um, but the Texas stuff was just... The Texas stuff ate up, like, our whole month of supply. Well, it came out of nowhere. It didn't totally come out of nowhere, but yeah, we were not... It was we not, short notice. We were not totally prepared for it. It was short notice. Yeah. Pretty short notice. Three months to make products, which takes about three months to make. Yeah, and we already and we had, had three months worth of schedule. production on the schedule. And the Kickstarter, so yeah, it's full. It's been full. It is currently still full. <laughs> it's still full. It's fuller. It's fuller. So you're putting the shell together? Yep. I did the lining first. Just to get out of the way, as I had intended to do. Um, I hope it was educational. <laughs> Those people who wanted to see the lining, I hope you love watching us make the lining. <laughs> make the lining. I really, I really don't mean anything bad by it at all. Um, this looks like a tent. Yeah, this material look, kind of looks like tent material. Yeah. On the interior. On the outside, it looks great. On the inside, it kind of looks like a weird tent. Yeah, it's got this membrane that makes it totally waterproof. But it's also kind of visible because the membrane is white. Mm -hmm. And it has this like mesh sort of fuse to it to hold it together. Yeah. Hmm? John. People who want to watch the lining is today's insult. <laughs> <laughs> we really don't mean it badly. We don't. I was just. The I lining was doesn't seem that exciting. I, yeah, I've I done. I've done hundreds of linings. Right. Uh, the linings are always kind of the same because they're basically the shape of the jacket with no details. Yeah, and even then, the shape of the jacket is, you know, if the hem is a little different or if it's longer or something like that, the basic construction is the same. It's just. Slightly different lengths of seam. Yeah. We try not to overcomplicate our linings. Right. Because uh, the outside is, is is plenty complicated. I'm gonna just stitch these belt loops down. The little backwards forwards motion you're doing, you have pressed the tre the hand treadle in. Yeah, I've got this little lever over here. That allows the machine to run backwards and forwards. It just yeah, it, it adjusts the direction of the I really really don't need to back and forth right here, but I'm doing it anyway because I I do it often enough it's that it's sturdy that way. Really it's just habit. Like whenever I start sewing, I just always do that. I can barely stop myself from doing it because it's muscle memory. Well, and that's, I think, what makes people fast at sewing is muscle memory, right? Right. Like, it's not going to be fast just because... Yeah. Let's see. Cool. I can top stitch four seams. I'm going to top stitch from this corner all the way to this corner in the big U. Cool. You're going to do it over there? I have to. Okay, bye. <laughs> ah, the tool that David uses to trim the string, is, we call them snips. I don't know that they have another more formal name. No, that's what they're sold as. They're sold as snips, and they are easier to pick up and put down. Yeah, because they have a little spring-loaded thing in the inside, and um, 
People also use them for trimming bonsais. That's that's right. Um, or like plants in general. They used to be clipped. Um, and they are basically two little blades that, uh, it's like a scissor that auto opens more than anything else. Yeah, and they're very lightweight. Make, like a makeshift razor blade, I would think. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we... Yes, except a little less dangerous than that. Uh, we have bought, like, the really fancy ones. Like, these are the cheap ones. Yeah. Um, but the fancy, about... the fancy ones weigh, like, two or three times as much. Yeah. And even if that means they weigh, like, three grams, it's <laughs> as opposed to one. I don't know if that's accurate. I haven't measured them, weighed yeah. them. Yeah. Um, but still, it's like it, they're they're not heavy, but the difference is totally different. Like it makes a huge difference in the actual process. Yeah, I mean, something repetitive that's heavier than it needs to be is really really different than something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just even just a little bit, like cutting any amount of weight off, is totally worth doing. Yeah, they are just really efficient because they bounce right back, and you don't have to like open. Get yeah. your fingers stuck anywhere. And the nice thing about the weight is like they're easy to just like kind of push around. And I've got this magnet here uh, on my machine, so I can just keep them right there. Benefit of keeping them right there? That means they're there I when I need them. them if I'm if I'm snipping, they're just like right there. All right. Put the collar on and then put the sleeves on. I'm gonna leave you for a moment. And then I'll close be back. it. Don't despair. Okay.
Hi. Uh, confusing myself. Oh. Yeah. Why would you do that? Trying to remember which cuff. I usually do this the other way, but it doesn't really matter which way I do it. I just have to do it the right way. I just usually have this turned around a little bit differently. Um, but it's all going to be fine. So the cuff on, and then it is time to close. That's fine. <laughs> At least it's like the it's the hardest to look at the closing process. Yeah. Um, and it's incredibly warming. Incredibly warming. As an experience. Yeah, Emily was saying something like that too. Like her body temperature goes up. Yeah. Significantly when she does that. Kind yeah. Of. Somehow when cl closing and, and the final top stitch is just, it's just hot work. Sweaty work. Yeah. Nearly there. It's probably, uh, I don't know, it's, you're paying more attention to more of the jacket. It's also, it's a lot, you're moving around all of the jacket at once. Yeah. Up until this point, you have like, you know, pieces. Right. Uh, but when you close it, you're putting the two halves of the jacket, the lining and the shell, together. They're like welding, welding the jacket? Yeah, welding the jacket together. But really, just move, you're moving around twice as much material as you have been up until that point. Yeah. Um, and you're trying to get it to match up nice? Yes, if it does not match up nice... It won't look good. It's real bad. Bad, bad, bad. It's just a wasted afternoon. I have to turn the whole thing inside out. Well, that's it. Yeah, well, I gotta do this this one more top stitch, and then... But yes, the whole thing is going to be... Do you turn the, in, the lining and the, and the shell inside out? Everything, uh, yeah. Everything all the way inside out. Everything all the way inside out. Then you find a tiny little gap to sort of... Yeah, you leave a little gap open. Pull it out through. Pull it out. Well, uh, there are a lot of really great words in sewing. Like this thing behind here, maybe you could read it, is called a ham. Yes, that is a ham. For sewing, it's for um, ironing things over a rounded surface. Roughly the shape of a ham. I love that it's called a ham. H A M? Ham? Yes, ham. Ham. Tell me that's not great. It's called a Taylor's ham. Taylor's ham. And they come in different shapes. Yes, you can get different types of ham. Are they also named? Oh, they're also called, they're all called hams. They're though. all called hams. The name doesn't change based on the shape. No, it's a missed opportunity. I agree. There is a big I, uh, uh, so, uh, Taylor's turkey and a. Yeah, here we have a uh, Taylor's rump roast. Anyway. <laughs> they're just all meat related. Yeah, they're all pork meat names. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did recently learn about a thing called a Taylor's anvil. Ooh, which is pretty cool. cool. It's for ironing. It's like a it's a wooden. It is shaped like an anvil. Goofy. But it is wooden. Typically uh, a pop up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's just, it's this thing that's sort of, and it's got a point on one end. Yeah. So you can turn points out and you can iron points that on that. It's like really sharp on one end. Also, apparently, wood is really good for the ironing process. Why? Because um, it'll help to set a crease. So you 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 iron it. You know, it helps set a crease more than. I'm gonna explain. Okay, I'm ready. If you if you if you press a thing and you iron it, you're ironing it with both heat and moisture, right? Because the iron has water in it and uh, and yep. the heat is there. Um, because it's fabric, when you iron it with heat and moisture, you are making the material more pliable. And it will so it will right it will remain pliable until it is cool. Okay. So. If you want that to be, that to do with wood? if you want that process to be quick, you can use wood, and that will both conduct the heat out of the material, but it will also absorb the moisture because wood, as opposed to metal or something like that, yeah. won't absorb I, okay. won't absorb moisture. Yep, yep, yep. It's not as conductive, and it's less conductive, so it'll, 
So the wood will both sap the moisture and the heat out of the fabric, and that will set the crease more quickly and more effectively. Wood won't retain more. Yeah. If you really wanted to say you could get like something really cold and iron it on or something. Yeah, I guess so. Cold and porous. Yeah. Cold, just just put your t put your tailor's anvil in the in the mini fridge. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Theoretically, that should work, right? Yeah, right. Uh, all right. So if we're, if an embroidery machine is not on our top list of wishful machines, what would be up on the list for you? Oh damn. Of machines you long for. Uh. Something that we can't do in this space is an uh, spreading machine would be would be really cool. And we can't do it because in this space the pillars are too close together. The pillars are too close together. You can see these pillars maybe can't on one all. of the cameras. No, no. You may have seen them, the giant red pillars in our in our space. Um, they're about eight eight feet those apart. Those pillars. Those are the pillars we're talking about. They're about eight feet apart at the narrowest. Um, Set this fucking zipper. Don't talk swearing. to him. He's doing the zipper. This is the hard part. Swearing loudly. Uh, so they're about eight feet apart at the narrowest, uh, and our table is like six feet wide. Um, and the spreading machine basically mounts on top of the table. And the the only way that it would work is you'd have you'd have to have a spreading you have to have five five feet of clearance on either side of the on table. On the table, for, which is for, already. Six and a half feet. Right, right, exactly. So we would need to have a 15, 16 foot open space uh, for the table to be sitting in the middle. And then this machine, which sits on top of the table and moves, like has a, has a, uh, a motor and will move up and down the table and lay out layers of fabric. The reason you need that much space for clearance is because it has platform on either side. So you can be standing on the machine and riding and it, it up and down, up and down, the, down the, the table so you can be watching, you know, getting the layers set up nicely. You can work and have fun at the same time. Exactly. A little like driving a forklift, except you only go up and down the table. The, if the guys at PAX, the three minute, if there are any... They are a danger on those forklifts. They were not having any fun on those forklifts. <laughs> no? either. I could tell by their faces they hate it. Well, they're from Boston. It's normal. <laughs> you don't have any fun. They, they, hate that. they may have been having the time of their lives, and you couldn't tell because... True, it's true. I come from Boston too, and I also <laughs> can come off as brusque, but not like not like union workers. Not, not union workers. workers. Not, That's not, a special not breed. Not union workers driving no. a forklift, bro. No, <laughs> no. And I have been out of Boston for but my Bostonness has rubbed off, huh? or not, or rubbed off on somebody else. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just sloughed off. <laughs> what a gross word. I mean, rubbed off is not great either. <laughs> That's faded. Yeah, Let's just say. When you said rubbed off, I thought you meant like onto someone, like you mm -hmm. transferred it onto someone else. No, David has his own variety of. I've New got York, my own variety. I've got plenty. New Yorker assholery that. I, I thought you meant like you spent more time with someone else and like they became more dickish after you uh, <laughs> transferred it to them. No, mostly you see David's New Yorker come out when he drives. Because he cannot tolerate people who do not know how to drive. Yeah. And uh, shouts at them in the car. And I'm like, the only person you're shouting at is me. <laughs> and I'm not responsible for how those people are driving. I'm not shouting at you. I'm shouting with you. I'm sure that probably, goes, I enjoy the that shouting. That probably goes over very well. I'm yeah. sure he's probably... Yeah, he's really receptive. He wants to, to listen to reason in that moment. <laughs> yes. He's like, yes, Willow, you're correct. You're absolutely right. I don't know what I was thinking. You. The only person who's suffering is you. Do it! So far. <laughs> so far, that's worked really well. It can't be that guy. It's got to be you. <laughs> I will say, I, I hate it. The other day, I was going to pull out. When you have the right of way, and or someone else has the right of way, and they, but they let you go because they think they're being kind, but it in makes reality, me so mad. messes everybody else up. Yeah. It's the worst thing you can do on the road, guys. Also, in the rotary, when people are like, no, no, go ahead. I'm like... Ooh. You're in the rotary, you this go. This would work if you just stuck to the rules. I would rather die than do what you're telling me to do right now. <laughs> Strong feelings coming out of Don't go into the rotary, you are going to die because I will crash into you. <laughs> what kind of soft shell is used for that jacket specifically? Evan uh, Friedman wants to know. Have you considered? 
something like a tweeve or a sh eh. gosh, a scholler sea change. I'm not sure I'm saying scholler right, but you speak German, don't you? That's obviously a German word. <laughs> it's know. gotta be. No umlauts. <laughs> so it's hard to so tell. It can't be German. Yeah, right. Doesn't have umlauts. <laughs> the only way to tell. Yeah. Less than three umlauts, not a German word. All right. So what kind of jacket is the? What material is the shell of this jacket? Uh, it is a waterproof, a laminate waterproof material. It is not a brand name of those. It's a waterproof laminated material. Yeah. So it's like a Gore-Tex, but not a a, a Gore-Tex name. But it's not Gore-Tex. Um, a lot there's there's a lot of material out there. There are oh, a lot of companies out there. Change people. This is big news. This is big news. Yes, I am now. The other past. tiny little foot has gone on. I don't know the difference, but maybe you can share with us what the difference is. Oh sure. Uh, I got I got one of these. Lower, lower. Yep, there. Yep. This is our normal one. Uh, it has needle. uneven toes. Yeah, I don't feet. know. Feet. They're the, called feet. Sure. They they might be called tines. Oh. Like a fork. I don't but know. I, know I have no, no idea. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> You're self-taught. We're all yes, making it. Yes, I'm self-taught. I don't really know, but the needle goes through through in the middle of these, right? Like right up here in the crotch. Oh, really? <laughs> this is in evolving the... quickly. <laughs> Finish uh, the jacket before something bad happens, David. Right. So that's our normal one that works. So you get even pressure on both sides. Uh, this is the, what I'm working on now is a zipper foot, which only has one of them, which so means that it doesn't. One of the two feet. Yes, which means tines. Toes. <laughs> Toes. Whatever they're called. <laughs> Crotch. No, no. <laughs> Which means that it, I can I can get up close to the zipper because the zipper has a obviously has a thickness to it, um, so I can get up close to it. It's a Swiss word we learned shoulder when okay. I said it right, which is very lovely of you for confirming. So it, Thank so you. So it probably is German because Swiss is not a language. Oh, okay. that's just not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so have you considered using something like a tweeve or a shoulder sea change? I don't know what that means. But maybe I honestly don't know what either of those things are. I don't either. know what that means either. Uh, Sorry, so, Evan, you are more articulate than we are. So, somebody should write. We will Google it and then get back so, to you. Somebody should write that in the Discord so that I can go look it up later. Cool. I will Google it right that's now. That's a rabbit hole I definitely want to go down. That is a rabbit hole you want to go down. Great. We will we will help you go down that rabbit hole. Um. I will put it in the Discord to you. Thank you. So I was saying that that uh, there are a lot of like. You know, brand name waterproof fabrics that Never exist, yes. uh, and like Gore-Tex or something like that. But if we were to use Gore-Tex, weave is also. I would just like to say a great word. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What were you saying about Gore-Tex? Uh, because it's proprietary, ah. it they have they have rules. You have to be licensed in order to use Gore-Tex. Um, so they have you to come in. You have they, to have a Gore-Tex license. You have to have a Gore-Tex license, and you pay for that license. I think you even pay them probably royalties. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. because they have such a a, a strong brand that yes. people like to see Gore-Tex on things, even if it, you know, even if you can find the same sort of fabric made with the same techniques, yes. Yes. Uh, and even the, the same machinery. Brand, yes, that makes sense. But that brand is powerful enough that if you want to use it, you need the license. And if you want to use any of their material, you have to not just have the license and pay for it, but you also have to put an external logo on your product that says, that Gore says Gore-Tex on it. So that's why you see that like extra tag on yeah. shoes and stuff like that are made of Gore-Tex has like a Gore-Tex tag on top of the Keens or whatever yeah. they're made, you know. Oh, we're learning fascinating things from Evan about about the fabrics. Um, so it is a high-end membrane and its pores open up as the temperature increases, presumably so that you can, so it's breathable at higher temperatures and more waterproof at cooler temperatures. This is very cool. What a great, it's a great idea. Piece of information. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure we will research this. Weave is a mountaineering fabric that is used in a lot of tech wear pants, super stretch nylon baits, but needs a DWR coating to have weather resistance. Cool. Yeah. Short answer is we haven't looked for those specific names, but we are always looking for materials that do stuff like that. Um, right. And this and this does a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but we again, do, it does. We do have some. Yeah. This is stretchy and. Flexible and waterproof, and it doesn't have pores that open up. That's a very cool new level, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that, so yeah, that's cool. We'll look into it. I will, will say that your 
Willow, your description pales in comparison to theirs. You're just like, our stretchy. Uh, it's pretty. It's very, very nice. It smells good. It smells sometimes. Good. Oh, no. Um, yes, you're right. Uh, it does have... So their, the... their description is very technical and correct sounding, and mine is not. I try not to... You know, and that it may be true. Uh, and a lot of like a lot of companies use like some fancy ass buzzwords. That's right. Um, that are basically stretchy and approved for. Yeah, yeah uh, which is not to say that this it, that it's not true, but it also like yeah. Uh, like in Mad Men, when they were talking about s s selling cigarettes, and they're like, "It's toasted," and everyone's like, we, "They're all, all toasted." All to you know, all to tobacco is toasted. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. But ours is the first one that said it out loud. For, right, you know. right. Yeah, no, there. So, you know, that's where I like, I, I'm i cautious of getting into the brand name fabrics. Um, because this does a lot of that stuff. It's totally waterproof. You saw the, the catch-up video. You did see the catch-up video? This is the same stuff. We're zooming in on David's fingers for the final, the final countdown. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good. I have um, I've never sewn my finger with a sewing machine. This is not the day yeah. to start. <laughs> yeah. If I ever was going to, it would be while using one of these zipper feet. You see, because it doesn't have That's any protection. <laughs> we uh, will accept no finger sewing. Please and thank you. I'll tell Emily's story, even though she's not here. She can hear me over there, knowing that I'm stealing her story. That so when she got her job at her at her previous job, also stitching, one of the first things they told her is. You will sew your finger. It is inevitable. Uh -huh. uh, is it inevitable? If you're in this position, this is what is going to happen. Is that true? <laughs> it's not inevitable. They just all do it at some sort of rite of passage, and uh, we don't agree with that. We don't think that's necessary. The rites of passage are not necessary. That's the hardcore hazing I ever heard. <laughs> yeah, you will sew your finger. Just get used to it. Yeah, just accept that now, and it'll be easier when it happens. Agreed, I, I guess. I just, I just wholeheartedly do not agree with that ta that tactic. Yeah. I think maybe they're focused on the wrong things if they're like, it will happen to you. Yeah. Yep. But the accident happened at the weirdest place. In the weirdest yeah, moments. I've cut my finger with the cutting machine. Right. I get ready to turn it. Uh, a jacket with a yeah. piece of David sewn into it would sell for a premium, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't I'm going think to we're shortly. Up for I still got to do the so other. So sorry. Uh, so I'm gonna cut up Frank a little bit, but all right. See. Yeah, I still have to do one more, a couple more things of stitching. So he's cutting stuff off. Why are you cutting stuff off, David? Hello. So I'm cutting off the, these little triangles, these little deltas. Starfleet Deltas, because I want more of them in my life. Uh, now, I'm cutting them off because this is these are the corners, the 90 degree corners, and it is much easier to turn those corners out and get a nice crisp corner if you cut off the excess fabric from that oh, 90 Lord. degree. Right? Yeah. So, like, this is the stitch, and like, it low. used to be that, but if I just cut all that off... Back a little... There you go. The is pretty, it, like... It's, okay, great. I'm just going to go right here. Is that good? Perfect. It's great. Yeah, so you see the stitching line? And then the, I've cut off that little corner, so it just, it'll make it easier to turn when I get there. But I'm not there yet. So I still have this fun thing. This is kind of what I was talking about with the... Uh, so this part is weird as hell. I got to I gotta close the, the... This part is weird as hell. <laughs> it's I totally concur. weird. This is the sleeve. I have to close the sleeve before turning it inside out, but I have to do it in a in a. I have to make sure it doesn't get twisted, and I also have to make sure it uh, can be turned and pulled inside out. So you need this like sort of circle thing. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to say this, especially not with a camera where I'm like. Don't try just, just do it, and then you can explain it to us after you're finished. Uh, yeah, that might work. Kind of just. Da -da -da -da. I'll, I'll just do that. Got a long time. Will that help? Nope. Got a long time to go. 
He just explained how this is like the most harrowing part. So you're saying I'm not a is that what you're saying? You're <laughs> such a help though. I know. What could you do without me? Um oh and we're back on a new foot. I don't we're need I've done the, the zippers are done now, so Damn, I'm getting hot already. Closing. The hot closing portion. It's just, I mean, it's hard to look at when you're doing it. The sort of, uh, what is that? Mobius strip? This, yeah, it's it. a little bit like a, like a Morbius strip. What is it? Morbin time? Okay. What? I'm just kidding. It's a terrible thing. I just don't know what it is. Morbius. We didn't watch that Morbius. That movie with Jared Leto. Oh, okay. Yes, I know what that is. That's, that was the joke. That was, oh, okay. that that was, was the whole joke. joke. Okay, Beginning and end. I just totally missed it. <laughs> no, you didn't miss it. It was just bad. Uh, right. Yeah, it was really bad. No, it is like a Mobius strip in that it is sort of continuous. It's like a an infinity sleeve. Infinity sleeve. I did see a bunch of trailers for that movie, and then it was like, it came out and there was silence. There wasn't silence. There were memes. Uh, I missed the memes. What a shame. It was pretty much just what David said. It, it was the only meme, and it continues to persist as if it was a good one to begin with. Okay. I guess that's my fault. I guess I've, I've contributed You've to that. You've just added to the... Yeah. What are people up to this fine <laughs> Thursday afternoon? I'm just uh, sewing this thing. Miss Enigma wants to know if the stretch goals could maybe come to the shop as pre-orders later. Ooh. For the Kickstarter. But I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose. What do you think? <laughs> I guess it does kind of defeat the purpose. The whole point of the stretch goals is that we would add you, them to the You should have gotten us there in the first place. It's your fault they don't exist. But also, if we have the things and people want to buy the things, it seems like a shame to just say, no, you can't have the things. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I would agree with that. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, we will... There, you know... Right now, right now we are focused on getting the game. We are out. so focused on getting it done. Nothing else is real or relevant, and uh, we will try again. Not entirely true, but nothing else matters. No, we we're focused on that, and then I think we're gonna assess what happens next with the starter stuff, and we're done. The operator bag, I will. It, it does have a future life. It does. Um, we actually have a color to reveal that we haven't um put on the website yet. But you heard There's, it here in and nowhere else. No, You're no, going to keep it to yourself. Works. Nobody's going to say that. Yeah, yeah, else. that never works. Um, <laughs> we do have some, some more stuff that we want to do with it. But uh, at this point, until we finish shipping out those orders and cleaning up and getting like and just once the dust settles, we'll be able to. Uh, Aw, our chat disconnected. I don't know what that. I'm gonna. The, I'm gonna do the, this now. Uh, that you can please wait while we retry or I try to reconnect. And the stream's still up. Yeah, we'll just wait. It's fine. I don't know. That's weird. Um Wow, look at that growth of people, sort of. Hold up. Mine's on. Are you flipping it? I'm flipping it. Somebody asks, no custom orders anytime soon then? And the short answer is no. The short answer is no. Sorry. It's unfortunate. We love doing them. We can't to do them. Hopefully this won't insta fail us. Do 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 do. No. Now. So now I have to go around and find all those corners. I interviewed someone today, and I asked them what we might do differently for our media strategy, and they were like, "Your photography is really impressive." I was like, "Yes, but what would you do differently?" Also, that's it. And then, and then that was it. Yes. Um, yes. They didn't mention David's beard. They didn't mention David's beard, so they're basically not going to get hired. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prerequisite. Prerequisite. You have to be impressed with David's beard. No. Um. Well, no, I didn't say impressed. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. <laughs> God, you're such a punk. A punk? What a year. Well, that, that's it. I mean, there's a lot to like about Don Draper, but I guess absolutely no negative. No, none. <laughs> He's totally ethical and totally consistent, and 
Doesn't he spend like the whole time cheating on his wife? Yeah, and then like everyone else too. Great. Look at that slick Volante logo being hauled out of that bag. Oh, oh, we're getting a slightly nauseating close-up. Ah, we gave up on the close-up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you make that window bigger. So. Yeah, yeah, it's working, it's working. I'll make it slightly bigger. But we'll keep the titles. Ta-da! There's almost a jacket. Just about. It's just that final top stitch. Don't do it. Don't do it? Don't do what? Nothing. I won't say it. Oh. <laughs> uh, that? <laughs> Guess that. It was going to happen. It was yeah. an invite. I got it. A jacket. A very black jacket. A very yeah. black jacket. They look so weird before they get the final top stitch. Yeah, because they're all poofy. Because they're like, yeah, marshmallowy. Man, we could save ourselves a lot of work if we just sold poofy jackets. Yes. It's not true. It's more work. Different. Different work. All right. Now I will turn my back to the camera once again. But then it's just about done. Woo! Probably be more work. Motion graphics. Why they're poofy? And like that would probably be the most oh, work. Would be my fingers and armpits. Would be explained. <laughs> I have to focus. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, but, uh, um, the reason that they're poofy <laughs> is that they basically the seams like come together like this, and then the the like outside fabric is sort of fluffy. It's not the right word, but sort of turned around. And then when we top stitch it, like David is doing now, smooshed into place um, permanently, and then the bottom edge is crisp like if you look at the bottom of your jeans or something they, they've been pressed and top stitched to really have a crisp i don't know if we can refresh the page without ruining the stream i don't know that either would you like to find out yeah try it and then i'll walk back in there and make sure that it still works uh, yeah there, that's what i thought that's not... it like periodically signs you out over time excellent it, but it, could, just pick right, it could just pick right back up though are we still live during this refresh process? Uh, probably. Oh, All and right. we have, uh, we actually have other questions that popped up. Okay. So I think we're still live. Would you guys consider doing another Kickstarter project? Yes, we would. Let me double check. Um. Does. Yeah, it says we're live. Yes, we would consider doing another Kickstarter project, but we are going to do a much more streamlined Kickstarter project that is a little narrower scope of work, basically. The way you photograph your garments makes the synthetic fabrics occasionally look like they have a stiffer drape than they do in this video. A That's stiffer what? A stiffer drape, sort of like, um... Oh, yeah, yeah. Although I wonder if this fabric is representative of other stuff that Ronin is usually made out of. I think this probably is most like the Jonin fabric. Yeah, it is, it is the Jonin. It is the Jonin fabric. Uh -uh. So yeah, and it is it does have a bit of a stiffer drape. Um, which is actually something that I like about it. Yeah, it's nice. The stiffer drape kind of makes it stand up a little on its own. It has some structure. It allows it allows me to do some fun things around uh like the extra tails and stuff on the Jonin. Mm -hmm. Oh no. No, what happened? I ran out of bobbin, and I wasn't winding a new bobbin. Oh, no. So I'm going to have to run a new bobbin. That is the sound of running a new bobbin. I'm sure you're thrilled to know. Mr. Valley says, that is good. Can't wait to support it. Thank you. That is very kind of you. We appreciate having customers like you in our audience really makes it work possible so what uh i'm curious from the chat what do they think we should do what do you think we should do for our next Kickstarter? we've heard dog bags dog coats <laughs> um but we're open to ideas if you are like this is the thing i've always wanted and doesn't exist in the world it's it's all but guaranteed to be about dogs 
if we ask people. No. Yeah, that's true. People are pretty focused on their dogs in our Discord ch channel as well. Cats and dogs. Uh, and who can blame them? Currently, yeah. we have a children's camp next to coming in next door. And uh, they are doing drumming in, every day. And my dog is losing his shit every time they're walking through the hallways because he thinks that everybody needs to be notified. Yeah, it so, sounds uh, like somebody's playing Jum Jumanji down the hall. Yeah, it is a little like someone has opened up the Jumanji game and is ready to enter into the jungle. And, uh, yeah. Kevin Friedman wants to know how much time we have to hear about his Kickstarter ideas. <laughs> Plenty of time. Plenty of time. we got a whole Discord channel that runs 24-7. We do have a Discord channel that you're more than welcome to join, as long as you're nice. And it is uh, a good place to chat with us after hours or whenever we have on and there are other nice people hang out there please only join us if you're nice or at least be nice while you're with us or at least be nice while you're with us god i don't have the imagination to think of something like that but yes cat and dog stuff would be cool no problem imagination not necessary Paul's trench coat from Dune. Make sure you get the two closures across the neck in pearl. Mm. Generally a Dune-inspired look with more natural textiles to capture the medieval space look. Yeah, no, that was there was some really good That is really a cool concept. Stuff. And you should check out, I don't like to refer people to other people when I think that's in our real house, but you, in this case, um, there is an official Dune license collection. Yeah, but it's totally different. It's pretty different. You don't think it's relevant? They did, no, well, they did a Fremen line. That's not the Atreides. Yeah, that's true. They did a Fremen line, if you're interested. And the company's called... Demo, Demo Baza. Demo Baza. Very expensive, but beautiful stuff. Ah, you can find the Discord. There's a link on our website, I believe. Maybe also in our Twitter bio. A collection of David's design sketches would be cool for a non-Kickstarter item. That would be cool. What? Like a little lookbook, sketchbook of mm. some of your work. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, in fact, there is Dune licensed clothing out there. I think that's what you're saying what about. But in fact, it's true. No problem. And so what are you doing now? You're closing the jacket and we don't get to see it at all? I mean... Kind of. Yeah, kind of. It I'm... needs to be top-stitched, so I can't do it on that machine. All right, all right. But it will be done shortly. Cool. And then it will be too hot to put on. It will be too hot to put on, but we will suffer for our art form. But I will. I imagine. You, I guess. It also isn't my size, but that's We're fine. We're making some talons over here on the other side of the studio. Some talents specifically for TRF. We got some colors we've never made before. Some black and red ones. Boy, you're just teasing them now. I know, I know. You'll have to come to TRF if you'd like to buy those. So sorry. It's kind of fun to do a Ren Fair because we get to kind of not worry about how many we make. It's like, oh, well, this one is like this. Would you like it? Um, and that's not how it works online in the same way. It's not the most efficient way to do things, but it is fun. The demo Baza Dune stuff was interesting, but most of it came off as over-designed, more form than function. I wonder what made it seem that way to you. I kind of get where you're coming from. I generally think the demo Baza stuff is, is more form than function. More form than function. Beautiful concepts, but how fair in regular life, especially because the models they use are so consistently on brand emaciated, let's just say. Um, it is haute couture that is more costume than street clothes. I totally agree. It, they have great styles of designs, but I agree they sometimes seem less wearable. Yeah, but a lot of it is it 
could be more wearable than it seems like. Yeah, that's true. I because think they style it in a very dramatic way, and it could be... Uh, you could tone it down, I suspect. I don't know how to do this camera thing now. Uh -huh. But it is All done. Right. All right. Well, I'll come and mess around with it, although I'm not the camera expert. Good luck. Use that one. <laughs> this one. Maybe, but I don't know how to do it, so... We've lost our cameraman. Here is an all black. Are we on? I think we're reasonably focused, but uh. Yeah. Two. Sorry, slightly too large for David. All black. Waterproof. Waterproof Ronin. Ronin. That he's been known for the last couple of hours. Two hours and 22 minutes. <laughs> it's a lot of talking. It's some talking. Usually it's a fast breath. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. Yes. I gotta add this. I gotta add two snaps. Are you gonna focus? If I just do, I need to not move. He's trying. He's coming. He's coming to rescue us. Yeah. It looks focused. I'm gonna just do this. Do it like I do and then manually focus. Ah. Catch up. That's our new. Now get a bucket of water. <laughs> huh? Oh, now get a bucket of water. Yeah. Now a bucket of water. We did joke about that. We did joke about that. And so we did joke about ketchup as well. A little hard to see in this light. Yeah. Next to the door. Uh, there you go. Yeah, sure. Needs another couple of snacks up here. It does. I just that figured I would. I, that can be added later. Cool. Look, the detail. Now we've gone sideways. That much. Well, doesn't seem that much too big. For you. Standing right next to the water cooler. All right. Maybe I'll come over here. The water cooler is empty, unfortunately. Should be focused. 43? Mm hmm. Maybe the fabric. Oh, it's probably the fabric doesn't have that much give to it. Yeah. Wait, would you be willing to be sprinkled with a little bit of water? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he's like, Wait, yes. Hey, I'm a. Uh... Avoid the face. It's just gonna go down your Same shoulder face. there. Just pour it off on his shoulder. <laughs> she cannot wait to pour things. Thank you. Oh, we got our industrial strength zippers here. Yes. When they're brand new, they can be so they don't have any, like... It's easier, they get easier too. It's actually laid really nicely. I was afraid that it would. Yeah. Uh, I like the collar too. Mm. Okay. Turn uh, or okay. yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. And I'll try not to get it on your shoe. I don't have volume here. We're indoors. It's just completely off. It comes right off the shoulder. Sweet. She looks pretty sweet with the water beaded on it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you all for joining us. I don't know why putting water on things is our closing step, but it does seem to be part of the ritual. It's quite fun. At this point. Um, I think that we will wrap up our afternoon. Uh, it's been a pleasure to stream with you all. We can go back. Uh, y'all can wrap up here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do we have anything coming up in the future that you all would like to? I'm sure you'll hear about it if you're on our mailing list. Uh, Join our mailing list. Join our mailing list. <laughs> Zooming in on my page. On the new stuff. Uh, we the website update. Uh, let people know that things might be a little bit janky for a day or two. Yeah, um, yes. We are working on updating the website, so it is uh, a work in progress. Yeah, we have a new. Will be nice. Yes, we have a new theme, and it actually looks really good, especially on mobile. It looks significantly better. Yeah, we have a lot of functions that still theme didn't add, so we're happy to have that. Yeah, that'll be great. All right. Cool. All right. For All second, right. I think there's probably like some mic overlap because your mic is on, and that mic's. Too. You just turn it off too. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Uh, you have to turn it off, Will.
I'm the talent. Don't know. All of that.